Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm adding a brand new stock to my portfolio and that is On Holding. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I love this company. All right guys, On Holding. It is a fast growing, premium athletic wear brand that's based in Switzerland. Company initially focused on running shoes, featuring their proprietary CloudTech technology, which was designed to enhance comfort during landings. Well, the product line has expanded. Now includes tennis shoes and apparel. I'm excited to add this alongside my other apparel company that I love, Lululemon. On Holding has demonstrated guys consistently rapid and profitable growth, indicating it's more than just a pandemic era success. The company is emerging as a significant competitor to established giants like Nike and Adidas. Now, I wanna go over just some of the recent highlights from, uh, from the company and their performance, Q2 financial results. And then after that, I wanna share with y'all some areas of concern. So I'm gonna give you all the good stuff and I also wanna give you the stuff that I'm monitoring, keeping an eye on. There's always something to monitor when you look at a stock. Uh, what you can't always, you can't think that a company's perfect. You can't think that your stock is perfect. You have to keep your eyes open to the issues. I'm gonna tell you about those in one second. But first of all, let's look at their amazing Q2 financial results. Their revenue increased by approximately 28% to 567.7 million Swiss francs which exceeded their expectations. Uh, when it comes to sales guidance, management reaffirmed their guidance for at least a 30% sales growth for 2024. And their adjusted EBITDA rose by 44.7% to 90.8 million Swiss francs. Operating income? Growing at a faster pace than sales, guys, indicating strong operating leverage. Gross margins, those increased by nearly 60%. Their cash and cash equivalents grew by 32% to 652 million Swiss francs. And guys, they've got a strategic focus. On holding is increasingly shifting its sales mix towards direct to customer channels, okay? So reduce, they're reducing their reliance on wholesale distribution. This I think is a big thing. They're, the direct to customer share is growing by 1.5 to 2% annually with further growth anticipated. And they're growing internationally. The Asia Pacific region saw an 84.7% increase in sales reflecting the brand's expansion potential in new markets. And although apparel sales are a smaller portion of the overall revenue, they grew by a whopping 63% year over year. So when you look at all these numbers, absolutely fantastic results. Absolutely love what this company is doing. Now let me tell you a few areas of concerns and things I'm monitoring, and then I'll tell you, and then we'll go over investment considerations and uh, who this stock is ideally for. Of course, it's ideally for me because um, I bought some, but let me tell, let me give you a little bit uh, bigger picture. We'll zoom out at the end. Okay, but here are some areas of concern, things that we're, we need to monitor. First of all, supply chain. On holding experience to supply chain distribution in its Atlanta distribution center, which negatively impacted their direct to customer sales in the first half of Q2. So we need to monitor whether those direct to customer sales will accelerate in Q3 and beyond. All right, uh, second thing is the Olympics just happened. So we need to keep an eye on post-Olympic performance and we need, to accept, uh, we need to assess whether the sales momentum continues after the Olympic buzz fades and that's super important for evaluating the sustainability of growth. Q3, Q4 results will be critical in addressing concerns about a temporary sales bump that people are talking about because of the Olympics. All right, last but not least, inventory and margin protection. Ongoing inventory management needs to be monitored. They need to maintain their high gross margins without resorting to promotions or discounts. That's essential to preserving the brand's premium positioning. Okay, who is on holding for? Well, it's going to appeal to investors that are seeking high growth, high growth opportunities in the consumer discretionary sector. This is an aggressive buy for me, guys. It's got a lot of risk that comes with this stock. However, the company, and, and we gotta keep an eye on the company's high valuation because uh, it means that 
if the earnings are all disappointing, that could lead to significant stock price volatility. So we got to keep an eye on that, guys, and understand that if you know if you want more stability in your portfolio, if you want to avoid substantial volatility, uh, then you may find that on holding is a little bit too risky for you. All right. Now I try to balance my portfolio. I have some more stable investments and then I have some more, um, some more aggressive buys and that's exactly what on holding is for me. All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did leave a like, uh, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about on holding, whether you've al whether you already have some, maybe, maybe you're thinking about buying, selling what you're doing with this company. And if you think there's better buys out there, Hit me up on those as well. Uh, and guys, subscribe for more videos like this. Every single week, I post a video about a stock that I'm buying. All right, this is the first time I've bought on holding. A lot of times, I'll post videos about stocks that I'm adding to my position, but every single week, I'm buying something, and I'm making a video right here telling you all about it. Anyway, guys, y'all have an awesome day, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Peace.